everybody, and welcome to part three of our Alolan Starters Trilogy. I'm Polka Kells. And I'm Unique Star Alex. If you chose Poplio as your starter, the transformation from Goofy Seal into Beautiful Sea Goddess is stunning. Yeah, unless you were anonymously tweeted the Chinese leaks before the official reveal without absolutely no context or warning, Twitter. Yikes. But still, today's Pokemon is a stunning payoff for silly little Poplio, and all its little details come together for one slick Pokemon. Get it? Slick like a sea lion. It didn't even give anyone time. Never mind, let's just start. It's Primarina! Most beautiful and best one. Objective. Speaking of pinnipeds, that's everything in the seal family, by the way. At first, we sort of hoped Primarina would have a basis in Hawaii's only native seal, the Hawaiian monk seal. But other than the rare instance where a specific family saw it as their amuakua, which we talked about a little bit in the Decidui episode, most ancient Hawaiians just sort of regarded them as pests or a food source. They even used to call it the rat that runs with the waves, and that's just not nice enough for our beautiful sea princess. Still, Primarina is definitely inspired by seals and sea lions in general, and when combined with its feminine form and humanized appearance, they kind of reminded us of Selkies, which are seals from Irish and Scottish folklore who can shed their skins and walk on land as super sexy humans. Apparently, if a man steals a female Selkie's seal skin, she has to stay on land and be his wife and can only return if she finds it again. I messed up. Combo this with the singing mermaids and sirens that leave thirsty sailors to their deaths, and we're starting to get a pretty clear picture here, yeah? In fact, in Japanese, Primarina's name is Ashiren, which is actually a combination of Ashika, Japanese for sea lion, and Siren, which is French for mermaid and siren. Pretty cool. And honestly, it's that voice that's Primarina's pride and joy. As the soloist Pokemon, it has the power to control the water with its voice, which it relies on for battle and life in the wild, so most of the time it's just taking care of its throat and practicing, which is why its English name Primarina has its roots in the literal Italian prima donna, which doesn't mean a spoiled brat so much as it does the chief female singer in an opera or opera company. Back in the 19th century, when opera was much more popular, prima donnas had huge fan clubs, which often had fierce rivalries and heated debates about which first lady was the best of them all. Therefore, prima donnas were super particular about taking care of their beautiful voices, and it was a combination of this and their elegant social stature that gained them the reputation of being super high maintenance and self-absorbed. Though Game Freak does go pretty far out of its way to assure us this is not the case with Primarina. Instead, they take extra care to make it clear the whole evolution line prefers putting others before itself, though it's still pretty careful of its voice. So design-wise, I gotta say, this thing is pretty neat. Agreed. And you ain't lion. Get it? Like sea lion? Yeah. I get it. But as Pokemon scientists, there are way more things to cover. Really? Like what? Isn't it obvious? We gotta find a real world analog to Pokemon water magic. We do? Yup, and if we do, you can bet it's gonna be some good Pokemon science. Oh, yeah, is that the segment we're doing? What? Yes, what are we still doing here? G go, let's go, this is the segment. Primarina controls water with its voice, but how does that work? One clue from the Sun and Moon website is that some of the bubbles she makes explode when touched, which makes for a pretty good show. But what if I told you that that is not only cool, but also rooted in some good darn science? Would that be sweet? Of course it would. If there's one thing we all know about sound, it's that sometimes it can be pretty powerful. After all, sound waves with resonant frequencies are all it takes for someone to shatter a glass with their singing voice, but what if there was more? What if the idea of sound waves and frequencies could actually go much further? Well, enter acoustic levitation. And by the way, the science is good. It's good science. In reality, sound waves are essentially pressure waves. And if you're making the right sound, you can actually move objects. In an acoustic levitator, high frequency sounds are played facing one another, which creates zones of pressure and non-pressure. Placing an object in non-pressure zones completely surrounds it with pressure waves and causes the object to levitate, which is cool in its own right, but when we bring water back into the equation, it becomes one of those things where you just gotta sit back and say, man, that is some good science. Levitating water with sound creates tiny little perfectly round balls, and though it's only ever been done on a much smaller scale, tell me that mess doesn't look a lot like a baby version of Primarina's signature Z-Move Oceanic Operetta. Looks pretty good, right? Just like the science, which is also good. But the best part of the whole thing is what happens when the bubbles get too large and the pressure waves overcome the surface tension of the water. It all explodes, which means the concept of levitating and exploding water is absolutely real. Of course, you have to perfectly line up the sound waves and a single Primarina would have to have some pretty crazy vocal cords to do that on its own. But the idea itself, that's just some good science, baby. Woo! See, 
and that's why Primarina is the best of all the Gen 7 starters. But you can't just say that. JK, that's just my opinion, man. But in my mind, that opinion is fact, and that's kind of all that matters to the internet, huh? Dang, too real. But you know what else is too real? What? I don't, I don't know. I always feel like I gotta do a smooth transition. VGC 2017 is not too real, guys. It's great. They know. Yep. Check it out. Pokemon! Even though it's got the highest special attack of all three, Primarina is kind of outclassed in VGC 2017 by Milotic and Tapu Fini, who have better abilities and all-around base stats. But if we focus on Primarina's most unique feature, its voice, maybe we can come up with something kind of neat. Start with a calm one and EV train it in HP and special defense. Prima fills the role of specially bulky water type pretty well, but the true strength of the set is going to come from swapping in after you've already gotten a KO or two, and being that impermeable wall between your opponent and the finish line. Therefore, run rest along with a Chesto Berry, which immediately wakes you up from sleep, for the ability to completely heal in a single turn. We're gonna keep the stay alive as long as possible train going with Protect to go with rest for three pretty safe turns in a row, which is perfect for setting up the gimmick of this set, Perish Song, which faints any Pokemon that hears it in three turns. This is great for changing up the dynamic of the last few turns, especially with bulky opponents like Celesteela commonly in use, but it also immediately kills any hope your opponent has of Baton Passing, which is a great added bonus. And of course, you still need some kind of attack on there, so go with Primarina's signature move, Sparkling Aria, which not only has more base power than Scald, but also heals burns on contact, which can be really nice for some matchups. And that's that, but of course, that's not the only way to train a Primarina, not by a long shot. So as always, here are a few random thoughts. This set goes from weird and kind of cool to awesome and amazing once Primarina gets access to its ability Liquid Voice, which changes the typing of all sound moves to water, including Parish Song. Pair it with something like Water Absorb, Dry Skin, or Storm Drain, and now your partner doesn't even have to worry about the fainting effect. Free. It also makes it a pretty good idea to swap in Hyper Voice instead of Sparkling Aria for sure, but Primarina has a bunch of great stab and coverage moves too, like Moon Blast, Dazzling Gleam, Scald, Ice Beam, and Energy Ball. Use them as you need them. Yeah, and if you really want to lean on that buff special attack stat, why not run a choice spec set? Sometimes that can be just the thing to get a one-hit KO when your opponent least expects it. And finally, there is some merit to running Primarina with a Primarium Z for Oceanic Operetta, but most of the time, surprise factor is outweighed by an actual reliable moveset, so use it at your discretion. And that's it, Primarina, the beautiful singing water goddess who rightfully takes care of her somewhat scientifically accurate voice. Thanks for watching, guys. And thanks to these folks you see here for supporting us on Patreon. We like having a studio to student, student, shoot in. It's tight to have it. Let's just keep going. All right. Let us know if this episode changed your mind about your Poplio hate or if it just further cemented your love of the cute little guy in the comments below. And while you're at it, suggest a Pokemon you'd like to see us do on an episode in the future. Or if nerding out with us online is more your thing, follow the link in the description below to our Discord, which is a great place to trade, battle, and discuss lore right now, and something we have big plans for in the future. Links to more Pokemon trivia and strategy incoming. I'm Unique Star Alex. And I'm Pokekels. Tune in next week for another moist episode of The Dex. Dex.